Last night, as we said, there was a political earthquake in the American South. Doug Jones became the first Democrat to win a U.S. Senate seat from the state of Alabama in 25 years, defeating Republican Roy Moore. As John Yang reports, the GOP loss followed a tumultuous campaign. You know, I have said throughout this campaign that I thought that December 12th was going to be a historic day. Celebrating his upset win last night, Doug Jones called for unity. I have always believed that the people of Alabama had more in common than to divide us. We have work to do to reach across with those that didn't vote for us to try to find that common ground. I'm pledging to do that tonight. Today, Jones said President Trump reached out to him with a gracious phone call. And we talked about finding that common ground to, to work together, and he invited me uh, over to the White House to, to visit as soon as I get up there. With a surprisingly strong turnout for a special election, voters in one of the most Republican states repudiated the party's nominee, Roy Moore. In the closing days, he was dogged by decades-old accusations of sexual misconduct with teenagers. Thank you. You know... Last night, Moore refused to concede. And realize when the vote is this close that it's not over. And we still got to go by the rules about this recount provision. But the Alabama Republican Party declared that the race was over. This morning, former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee agreed, tweeting... God wasn't registered to vote in Alabama, but the people who voted did speak, and it wasn't close enough for recount. The African-American community, thank you! Jones's improbable victory was fueled by a diverse coalition, including strong support from African-American voters. I feel like tonight means that America can be inspired now. I feel like for so long, for the past 13 months, righteousness seemed like it was losing. Exit polls show that 96 percent of African-American voters supported Jones. They made up 29 percent of the electorate, about the same as turned out for President Barack Obama's 2012 re-election. Basketball legend Charles Barkley, an Alabama native, said it was a wake-up call for Democrats. It's time for them to get off their ass and start making life better for black folks and people who are poor. Another crucial factor, write-in votes after Alabama Republican Senator Richard Shelby said he didn't vote for more. Well, I'd rather see uh, the Republican win, but I hope that Republican would be a write-in. I uh, couldn't vote for Roy Moore. There were about 23,000 write-in ballots, roughly the same as Jones's margin of victory. We want jobs, jobs, jobs. So get out and vote. For Roy Moore. Do it. Do it. The outcome was a blow for Mr. Trump, who embraced the embattled candidate in the final weeks of the campaign. As the leader of the party, I would have liked to have had the seat. Jones is not likely to join the Senate until January. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm John Yang. On last night's historic results, I'm joined by U.S. Representative Terry Sewell, who represents Selma and parts of Birmingham and Montgomery, Alabama. She was, until now, the only Democrat in the state's congressional delegation. Congresswoman Sewell, thank you very much for talking to us. Uh, you, as we said, uh, you are going to have some Democratic company for a change. Uh, how much of a shift was this in Alabama politics? It was a huge shift. Um, you know, last night, uh, Alabama spoke up and spoke out, and they showed up and, and, and showed out. Uh, my district overperformed, which was awesome. Um, I was just very happy that we showed the rest of the world what I already knew, and that's that the heart of Alabama is about decency and integrity and that character does matter. Um, and it matters so much that people were willing to, to, to actually, you know, do that, to vote out, out of their party, which is awesome. I heard Doug Jones today at his news conference give you credit for being instrumental uh, in turning out votes in the African-American community. Who does he owe this victory to and how much of it should go to the African-American vote in your state? 
Well, I think a large, a large part of it should go to the traditional Democratic base, which includes African Americans. You know, um, African American women turned out the strongest for Doug. And so when I think about who we owe this victory to, it's a whole coalition of folks. It's the African American community, it's the Latino community, labor. It's also, um, you know, white women in suburbia who have children. Um, so white mothers uh, is a big, was a big, uh, big draw as well. I think that um, what I'm most excited about is the fact that women really um, showed up for, for Doug Jones. Uh, of all the female voters, he received 57% of all female voters in this election. Um, so we owe a debt of gratitude to a lot of folks, but I think that this is a great recipe for other Democrats who are, who are, who are um, running in ruby red states like Alabama, that what we need is coalition politics. And a candidate does matter. Who the candidate is matters. His message or her message matters, um, as as well as working together and building coalitions. What would you say, African American voters who who voted for Doug Jones, women and others who voted for him, what do they look for him to do in Washington? Well, I think that they came out in droves because the stakes were so high um, and, and because Doug talked, spoke to issues, the same issues, whether he was in an African-American church or a synagogue or a chamber. He talked about kitchen table issues. So people expect him to fight for health care, to fight for um, equal funding uh, for public uh, education so that every child has an opportunity to reach their God-given potential. We really want uh, the, the senior, uh, the Senate leadership to hold back this vote on tax so so that the folks of Alabama have a true voice uh, in, in, in the Senate to vote against uh, a tax reform bill that doesn't help the middle class. So I think that our expectations is that Doug will do what he said and fight for the issues, those uh, bread and butter issues, kitchen table issues that are so important to all Alabamians. We noticed that last night in his uh, victory speech, he also, he notably called for reaching across the aisle, working with the other party. Uh, how much do you expect him to vote reliably Democratic, and how much do you expect he's going to look for common ground with Republicans? I think that, you know, I'm the lone Democrat, was the lone Democrat, I love saying that, was the lone Democrat in Alabama. And working across aisles is what we have to do in order to get things done uh, in the state of Alabama. The reality is that um, I've had to work with my Republican senators, my Republican delegation, in order to get, um, you know, economic opportunities for my district. We wouldn't have gotten the $150 million copper facility in the poorest district uh, in the state and the poorest county in the state, Wilcox, without Republican help. So I expect that Doug will reach across the aisles, as he said. I think that he is not going to compromise his core values or those core issues that people voted for him on. And so I expect that he will be um, a senator for all of Alabama. U.S. Representative Terry Sewell uh, celebrating today after Doug Jones' win. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we'll have more on the Alabama election results in just a few moments.